Hi everybody, welcome to The Rock in the Cloud, the latest episode. Uh, we're in season two and things are flying by. Um, as you probably know, Windows Server 2022 launched recently. So we're going to dig a little bit into that, but also we're going to understand it from an on-prem cloud, all that kind of usual goodness. That's what we talk about on this show. Um, and we're going to talk to an expert. Obviously, we need a special guest to actually decipher this technology. And, um, you know, you don't want to, as uh, you know, as always, you don't want to just talk to me. You want to talk to an expert. So uh, we've re reached out across uh, the Atlantic. And uh, we've gone all the way to, to Canada, Canada. Um, and we've gone to, um, whereabouts in, in Canada have we gone to again? We've gone to? We are in uh, Ottawa, Canada. Ottawa, uh, Ottawa, Canada. I mean, it sounds so cool. Um, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it gets cold there as well. Uh, but we're in Ottawa, Canada with, uh, with, with, with our friend, a uh, friend of the show, uh, Pierre Roman. He is back with us again. Um, as everybody knows, he's a little bit of a, a, a whiz uh, presenting God. Um, but uh, Pierre, just for those that maybe haven't seen the last episode with you in, just refresh our memories about why you're a good person to talk to. Why am I a good person to talk to? Well, uh, number one is um, it's part of my role, and I've been doing it <laughs> you for have a long to. time. No, 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 no <laughs> mean, you have to don't mean me. I have to. Uh, I mean, this is a, something I've been really passionate about for a long, long time. Uh, which is the reason I've gravitated to these types of role where uh, my role is almost like the, an interpreter. I interpret customer and real life environments to engineers. And then, then when the engineers come up with the product and they release it and then we look at it and then we, then we interpret what the engineers actually meant to do to uh, yeah. our, uh, our audience. So when the audience says, oh, well, this, this is great. However, this is a scenario that we want to use it in and it doesn't quite run right. Like what, what can we do? And then I take those requirements and those scenarios and I bring them back to the engineer and I say, why didn't we not address this? And they're like, either there's a real re reason mm -hmm. and then we communicate that. Or if there's not a real reason, then that goes on to the uh, to-do list for the engineers to, um, <laughs> to to adapt. So you're a technical spirit walker. That's kind of like your that's your kind of job. Um, yeah, and I have to talk. To, well, you know, we're privileged to talk to you, right? And today we're talking about um, exactly one of those simplifying IT management yes. and doing that in the realms of Server 2022 because we only just launched that a few weeks ago. So we're going to talk right. about that for the next thirty minutes. We're going to talk to you, Pierre. Um, and, uh, you know, if anybody wants to find out more about this subject, please do get involved. Let us know about it. Let us know what questions you might want to ask Pierre in a future episode. Um, and you know, we can, uh, we can spirit walk, uh, technically spirit walk, uh, whatever you want to, um, with, uh, with, with Pierre. So, um, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about the subject matter at hand, which is, um, simplifying IT management. Now that it sounds simple on the face of it. But yep. I think the reality is it isn't simple, okay? So Microsoft said, right, Server 2022 uh, was the first version of Windows Server to be designed fully in a truly hybrid platform, right? So that's quite a bold statement, but what does that mean, Pierre? So what does that mean? Um, let's roll it back a little bit to 2019 Ignite, when uh, Jason Zander, which is the uh, corporate vice president that uh, runs the uh, Azure uh, environment uh, in his keynote said and i quote uh hybrid is our customers end state so we are no longer under the impression that uh, cloud native is where everybody's going to end we know for a fact that the majority of our customers are going to be in an hybrid state for the foreseeable future uh, and yes, there are companies that are fully cloud or cloud native and have no uh, on-prem uh, footprint, but those are typically uh, startups or very new companies that have not invested into an on-prem uh, data yeah. center. Doesn't mean that at some point they're not going to get big enough that they're going to require some uh, local services, but for what they're doing, on-prem native work uh, is most likely uh, good enough, especially with Office 365, uh, Windows 
the 365 and all of the online services that we have. But what does that mean for Windows Server? So if we look at the, the, the evolution of Windows Server, like since 2012 and then 2016 and then 2019 and now 2022, they the the basic functionality of the server is still there there's some some tweaking uh in terms of performance uh, uh support for newer hardware uh there's definitely some tweaking in terms of the security but the biggest tweak in my opinion uh so if you ask like woolsey jeff woolsey or if you ask ned pile or others uh we may all have different uh little uh opinion as to what the biggest uh, improvement or, or tweak is, uh, for me is the way you manage them. Okay. And I see Azure or cloud or hybrid cloud, uh, as just an extension of the data center. So if you're running your data center, whether it's in a sim single room or in a football field size, uh, uh, structure extending to Azure, uh, is just basically like getting more footprint uh in in having servers most of our servers in any environments are virtualized anyway so virtualizing yeah. on somebody else's hardware or on somebody else's um environment as long as it's connected and managed the same way that works now mm -hmm. that being said when we say that windows 2022 is the, the the first version to be designed as a truly hybrid uh platform it's mostly based on the way you manage it. And if you're looking at the, the way you manage it, the, the best way of managing that server is through uh, Windows and Min Center. And of course, when you install Windows Server 2022 and you turn it on the first time, you'll still get the server manager that pops up um, and you can download and you can, and you can manage it that way or using all of the applets, uh, like in control, control panel applets that have been there for some of them for decades, hmm. like you can still manage wins on a, on a 2022 server and all of those uh, services. But when you, when it pops up for the first time, it says, Hey, you should really look at admin center and admin center integrates directly with windows 2022 and also with other uh, versions like 2019 and 2016 and, and so on. Uh, but it presents services that Azure can provide to make your on-prem or your hybrid environment better. Yeah. And that's native. That's like, that's like built in. The dependencies are there. Uh, everything's kind of ready to go. You just have to light up the services. Okay. So because of that, because of they it was built and designed with that in mind is what they mean when they say that server 2022 is the first version that's designed as a truly hybrid pat platform okay i look, i think that's i think that's great for for people who is because you know some people probably haven't got their hands on 2022 yet and you know they're looking at what they want to do they're looking you know and i think this is is super important but windows server is one of the reasons why it isn't just cloud or and hybrid is the end state is because there's there's history there for people okay because because the infrastructure that people have got has been built over years and years and years so these layers have been built up now we always encourage people to to move on to the latest version because you get the benefits but 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 this is the the first true benefit where it's actually been designed in a way that you can utilize on prem and cloud together with, yep. a, with a Microsoft solution without having to like Frankenstein, the kind of two things to kind of work together. Do you, you know what I mean? Like, like, like if we've actually, it's actually, you know, been geomed in that, in that way where it's actually designed to all work out of, the, out of the box, which, you know, that's brilliant. So yeah. what does Windows Server 2022 offer that makes it easier from an IT management perspective? What, like how, why is it simpler? Well, there, there are things like the the hybrid, the Azure Hybrid Center, uh, Azure File Sync. Azure File Sync is one of my favorites. Okay. Uh, mostly because I used to run uh, data centers for corporations before I joined Microsoft, and that was always the pain, the pain point. It was it was difficult because nobody actually, uh, very 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 rarely 
would your shares on your your uh, your network actually shrink? Like people don't get rid of data, <laughs> especially in this day and age when it's so easy to create it. Then you just end up having more and more and more data. Uh, Do you know and, what this is like? This is like you and your wardrobe and your Microsoft clobber. Like, yeah, <laughs> you just get more. It just gets more, and eventually you just look at your closet, and everything has got a logo on it, and that's the that's a different story. But that's what my wife keeps uh, complaining about: is that every piece of clothing I have has a Microsoft logo on it. Yeah, but the, the, those files replicate. It's they don't replicate by themselves, but what I mean is. Uh, and of course, users, uh, there's always education that needs to be done there where you have a team site or a team share or a SharePoint or whatever it may be. And then you put the monthly report on it. And if you have a team of 20 people, chances are uh, 15 of them, uh, those people are going to copy, a, 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 take a copy of that report and put it in their own uh, home shares, which ends up being on the same server. Guilty. 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 And I know, and I do that too every once in a while. Uh, then you end up with like 16 copies of that of that uh, that report. Now there's ways, of course, there's uh, in deduplication to like cut that down. Uh, but in a lot of cases, that data just grows and grows and grows. So we end up with having to add physical disks to that server, connect uh, more. Um, uh, network attached storage or whatever your storage solution may be. Maybe it's a SAN, maybe it's network attached, maybe it's a hard drive. Who cares? You, you still have to do the work and add storage. But with something like Azure File Sync, so you, in, in Windows Admin Center and Windows Server 2022, you just have to basically say, okay, turn it on. And it connects to your Azure environment and creates the um, the like the, the 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 flow is taken care of for you, where mm. it'll create the account, it'll create everything, make that link, and then start tiering your data. So even if you've got like I've got a customer or a, an entity that I've worked with not too long ago, uh, a studio that does uh, video recording, and they have terabytes a month of new footage that they don't want to lose even no. though maybe it's like b-roll and, and like 15 take of the same scene they still keep them for some reason yeah. um so on their local storage they were always at the point where okay so what do i do so i'll take uh, uh, uh last year's data and i'll move it to another server well that takes time that uh, gets your information into multiple different location when you want to have it all into one place. So we enabled uh, file sync or Azure file sync on that. Now it starts tiering old data to the cloud. Yeah. So their uh, 100 terabyte drive is still a 100 terabyte drive. It's set to always have 50% free space. So yeah, there's never more than 50 terabytes of actual data on those drive. But if yeah. you look at File Explorer, for example, you get all the files. It may look like there's hundreds of, of terabytes, but the old files that have not been used, so the what we call uh, cold uh, storage, has yeah. been moved off to the cloud, but it's still available. It still shows up. So if somebody needs that clip, they say, mm. okay, I want to open this one. The server connects, downloads it back, and then presents it to the user. It might take a little bit uh, more time the first time because it has to retrieve it from the cloud, but yeah. then it becomes hot again and it stays local until it cools down enough to be offloaded. So now you don't have to worry about every six months reevaluating all of your storage posture to see, okay, am I going to need another 100 terabytes added to my uh, storage array uh, for, mm. to, for, for growth? You set it, and then it just grows with you, and you pay for what you use. There's no yeah. capital investment. Uh, it's easy to back up. It's easy to uh, snapshot. It's easy to keep track of, uh, and that's all built into uh, Windows Server 2022, and it's lit up by Windows Admin Center. So that that's one of my favorites, and and yeah. and, and a really good example of how 
uh, cloud services enable hybrid work uh, and better and simplified IT management? Yeah, and I, you know, I think, yeah, and, and it's kind of obvious really, but that backup scenario is kind of, that's probably most people's starting point for hybrid because actually that's the sort of, you know, when I talk to people, like that's the number one thing they want to go do. They want to make sure that they've got that scalable backup and it's simple. Um, and actually that's where, um, you know, people are like, oh, I've got my old on-prem scenario. I'm afraid of doing anything with it. Well, move it along a little bit, get it to a place where it can have that hybrid relationship. And I, I think that's probably the best word to call it. It's a hybrid relationship, right? Because we're not saying that, you know, we have to like trash that old, uh, you know, data center that you've got. What we're saying is, is, you know, like buy a new outfit, get it like, you know, ready to come to the party and let it come to the party. And then, you know, let it, you know, let it, you know, let, you know, come to the ball, come to the party. Do you know what I mean? That's what we're sort of saying. Um, now, when I think about specific offerings in Azure that like truly simplify IT, um, now you've already mentioned one or two things, but is there anything else that you would, would you would call out? Well, there's a couple things that are specific to Windows 2022. Because if we were looking at uh, Azure File Sync or uh, backup and site, and site recovery that you just mentioned, yeah. uh, uh, Azure monitoring for monitoring your uh, usage, uh, uh, performance, uh, errors, and so on, that's all built in. But it doesn't just apply to 2022. It applies to 2022, 2019, 2016, uh, all the way to like 2012, I think it's still supported for not too much longer. So if you're still on it, maybe it's time to take a look. Yeah. Uh, even Linux, <laughs> even Linux, like these, these services all apply to all these versions. But what is very specific to 2022 is uh, something like if you're running a VM in Azure, that's 2022, you can now hot patch your servers. That's the that's number one of the yeah. uh, new capabilities that is uh, unique to 2022, where it will will take a, a kind of like a snapshot of what your your kernel the kernel mode is doing it'll uh, apply the patch and basically re not restart it it's almost like it i i'm missing the words for it but it, 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 it instead of taking a four minutes complete shutdown reboot yeah. it just basically kind of reloads the kernel without having to shut down the machine yeah so it kind and of then, like r runs and kind of loads in the background and then keeps it going. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like pedaling on the top and whilst that's whilst that's doing what it needs to do and it's more secure. Yeah, so it's I, much- I mean, that's a dreadful explanation there from, from myself, but that's, that's fine. Well, there are tons of videos from um, yeah. Jeff Woolsey uh, there, if you haven't been uh, or haven't seen the Windows Server 2022, like the uh, virtual uh, service summit, uh, it's online. You know you can I, I have seen that. I, Roman, I have seen that. And that was, they literally explained it a lot better than I did. So yeah, so yeah. Any, yeah. anybody who's watching it, go and watch Jeff explain it properly. Yes. So basically, <laughs> uh, but it is odd patching. So patching your server without uh, needing a complete reboot. So much yeah. quicker. Uh, downtime is much lower. So you can, if you have clusters of server 2022, uh, you can like cluster aware patching, but hot patching them, it, it makes things a lot easier. Uh, the other thing is SMB over quick. Okay. So quick, quick being a uh, basically an internet protocol transport uh, transport protocol that basically replaces your typical SMB transport protocol. Uh, all packets are encrypted with TLS uh, 1.3 because 1.3 is the default. Uh, on server 2022 so we don't have to worry about all of the old um, encryption algorithms that were part of 20 uh, of TLS uh, 1.2 uh, it ha it does parallel streaming uh, so reliable and unreliable like application data uh, get the same uh, treatment you can use it without actually connecting to a VPN. So it, it's almost like it creates its own VPN. So you can connect to your SMB shares across the internet in a secure fashion and in a very quick fashion. So SMB yeah. over quick, which is, uh, but you need a client that will support it. So Windows, uh, Windows 11, uh, when a server that will support it, which is server 2022, uh, those are uh, some of the benefits of SMB over quick. So very 
uh, secure, rapid yeah. connection over the internet instead of the typical SMB protocol. Yeah, so we, we, we've improved a lot of stuff, right? And you kind of hit the nail right on the head there. Security, so in terms of security, right? In the past, there were lots of configurations and you've mentioned SMB over quick, right? But there were a lot, there used to be a lot of things to onboard a server into security, yeah. in, like into a security environment. And, you know, what, what has changed in 2022, like in terms of onboarding a server from a security perspective? Well, let's take, let's, let's uh, take a turn in, in, the, in the past and start looking let's at. Go, let's go way back. Well, in the Wayback Machine. And, uh, and um, so you had to install like your antivirus. And then you had yeah. to install like your, your, your network uh, sniffer. And you had to install this like firewall and configure that. And then you had to install uh, some kind of log aggregation uh, tool. So either it was uh, System Center or, or others. There was like plenty uh, from partners. But then you had to collect all that data and then you had to go through that data and figure out whether or not you were at risk. Hmm. So that took a lot of uh, fiddling and configuration with the server and your environment to collect and analyze that info. And then it took a lot of time and for you to actually look and interpret that information, which is probably the most important part of it. Mm -hmm. Now with server 2022, and it applies to us uh, other versions as well, but with server 2022 uh, and what we call uh, ARC server or Azure ARC servers or ARC mm -hmm. enabled servers, those servers, when you install the, the ARC agent on, on those servers, they become uh, tied to your Azure environment. So they have an identity that's created in Azure a representation of that server in Azure. And from that point, all of the Azure services can be deployed uh, and, or most of the Azure services can be deployed to that machine. So when you're looking at onboarding in a security environment, then you 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 have access to uh, auto, man auto manage, for example, uh, which will turn on automatically like a, a, a endpoint protection and backup and so on. But mm. security center, uh, Azure Defender, Azure Sentinel, Azure Monitor, uh, that will collect all those logs and do, do the analysis for you based on uh, machine learning algorithms where it's already learned uh, the attack vectors or the attack patterns on thousands, if not millions of other uh, environment and other servers. Uh, plus yeah. the Microsoft Secure Cybersecurity uh, Center that basically builds uh, or, or or surfaces those attack vectors. It learns all of that and then applies those patterns to the data that it provides in your security center. And then it will tell you, okay, that there is a, there's an attack here. There's a uh, potential vulnerability here. It, it surfaces that information in a way that's easy to understand, like Azure uh, Security Center, when you've onboarded with Azure uh, Arc and you just basically say, yep, I want that server to be visible in uh, Security Center, it starts collecting that data and it starts not analyzing that data and it'll give you a security score. And yeah. the score is not necessarily like 80% and you're like, uh, if you get to 100%, then you pass. It's not like a pass fail. Yeah. Your servers change over time, and as yeah. more services are deployed on them, then there's more mitigation that can be done on those servers. So, and it will, after it scans a server and it says, oh, well, you've got Sir, you got SQL on that, and you've got a uh, uh, file share on that, and you've got all of these accounts on there and groups on there and blah, 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 blah. Then it'll say, okay, well, based on those services, there's a potential of a, a 500 score. And I'm just like, it's just a, a number I'm throwing out there. Yeah. You've only enabled or lit up the services to cover 400. Ver uh, so you've got 100 points uh, that are colorated, that are associated, sorry, I'll use that, that other word, yeah. uh, to mitigation or services that you could apply to protect that server. 
Yeah. So you can't say to your buddy uh, over pints uh, at the bar to say, hey, my secure score is 485. Okay. Because so, your server doesn't doesn't equal, it's like apples and oranges. Yeah, so, so there's a few things there. So it's, it's not the same as your, like, um, you know, credit score, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not your credit score. And, no. and each server is different. And, the, you know, that, that, that security rating is different to the machine. But I think there's also a nuance within that where, genuinely speaking, because you're working in a sandbox environment within the rules of an Azure environment, there's, there's nothing that hasn't been done before right so th that's where we're able to create the score because we because we, like we know where the attack vectors are coming we know where the compliance is and we know where the risks are and we're able to apply that to what you've deployed and then give you the information for then you to act on it um whereas you know that's maybe a change of role for somebody deploying a 2022 server they're looking at how um you know aligned to you know to compliance and risk rather than having to go through step by step and building it up and then still not knowing if it's right. Now they're able to look at a score and say, hang on a second, this is where we've got weakness in our um, you know, deployment. This is where I need to do some more work. This is where I need to focus my energy. And it's actually allowing people to be more strategic with their time and effort. So, yeah. I, I like the way you, you, you mentioned that it's dynamic versus uh, the traditional way of setting up server, which is basically you have like this build document and you go through and check one, ch install this, yeah. check two, ch configure this, uh, check three. Ch this one is as your server evolves and changes and things are added to it and removed from it and modified, uh, it will adapt and show you what's possible or where your vulnerabilities are. And it will suggest, okay, me, you should really apply this or your drive D that you've just uh, added to this server is not encrypted. Yeah. Okay, it's not encrypted. And you can you can respond yeah. automatically or you can respond manually, uh, depending on your policies, how your policies are set and all of the, the, the rest of the governance, which is kind of mm -hmm. separate from uh, Azure Security Center, but there's a lot of uh, connections there with security items and policy and compliance yeah. items. Yeah, I mean, I know there's no one product that's going to do it all for you, but they're all interlinked, right? Um, exactly. If we talk about um, resiliency and, you know, um, business continuity, what does Azure bring to Server 2022, which allows that to kind of mesh? Okay. Uh, number one is, as we mentioned uh, when we started this conversation, is that all of that is built in, but it's lit up through the Windows and Min Center. Windows Admin Center will allow you to do, especially for um, a, a resiliency, basically, or a site recovery in the real world without the cloud. So in a, a typical traditional data center, you'd have yeah. to figure out where else can I replicate that data or replicate those workloads or stretch that cluster. Then you're looking at rented space, you're looking at co-hosting, or if you've got, if you're big enough, if you've got multiple data center, you replicate, replicate uh, servers in data center A to servers in data center B, and then the B replicated to A's, but you still need the capacity on both sides to be able to support that replication, but you also have to manage that replication. Hmm. And typically, because the way the nature of the beast it's hard to actually run through uh drills like failover drills now with uh azure and azure and windows server 2022 uh and the services that are lit up by the windows admin console you can just say okay well this server uh, i want this drive this drive and this drive backed up to my recovery vault yeah. And, and then you then you go go away and it'll just start replicating that data to your recovery vault just like any other backup and you can go and, and the user say, calls you and says hey I've deleted this file by accident you can go to your recovery vault pick the folder pick the the the, the file and say okay restore that one so the same as you would be doing but instead of having to manage your tape library or your disk library or wherever you're going it, it's just you just light it up in uh, the admin center. The recovery, the business recovery, or the con continuity planning uh, that uh, where it becomes very, very 
interesting is you don't have to worry about building that replication or setting up the the capacity elsewhere you just say yeah. this server is one of my critical workload and i want it replicated so you initiate the replication it'll ask you a few questions say where do you want to put it blah 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 how often do you want to replicate it and then it goes then it creates the recovery vault it creates the uh uh all of the dependencies that are needed to replicate real uh, real time or near real time sorry it's not real time um that data so you first do like a, the complete drive and then after that every writes that are done to that disks are replicated to the uh virtual disk or the the replicated uh, data in the cloud and then at any given time you could easily go to your cloud and say i want to test a replication of that or i want to test the failover run a test where it builds a new machine based on the information that it's collected from the replicated machine you can go to it test it make sure that the your testing protocols are are good uh that the data is there that the system is um behaving in the expected way and then you say okay done i'm done my test you close the test and then it cleans out after it cleans up afterwards so yeah. all those machines are no longer needed. So you, you pay for what you have and what you're using for the time you're using it. So you don't have to worry about uh, keeping that capacity there in case you would need it. You just create yeah. it when you need it. Um, and because of the way uh, Azure Site Recovery, and it's, it's explained or not explained, but it's uh, set up through uh, Azure um, Windows and Min Console or the center, you can say these machines are part of my solution. So you have your like your front end, your database, uh, and you select them all and you replicate them as an application. So it creates uh, a, a application aware replica uh, um, replication so that your machines are always in sync to each other, not just to their replicated partner uh, across. Okay. So, so that's, where the, that's where the continuity comes in. Yes. Yes. Perfect. And it, it, it's really easy to light up. It's really, really easy to onboard. And it makes your IT management so much simpler because you're spending a lot less time planning capacity and planning how I'm going to create that replication and a lot more time actually uh, testing your disaster recovery protocols because you can test them so easily and then clean up after yourself you test in a, in a sandbox so it doesn't affect your uh, uh um, production environment but now you're now you know it works like i've yeah. i've had I did a security audit for a customer years ago and uh, they failed the audit because they didn't have a uh, business continuity plan and when i presented the results to the director uh, he got mad and he said what do you mean we have is a back a uh, the, yeah. uh disaster recovery plan and i went well the guys that are supposed to implement it are not aware of one and he's like and he literally did this and i like this is not a joke he turned around grabbed a binder from the the library <laughs> behind his desk blew the dust off the top of the binder put it on his desk and says here we we have this plan we had we spent a lot of money to get this consulting firm to come in and and establish this plan yeah the plan had never been tried never been tested never, never been, been implemented never been implemented by the people who are supposed to do it so okay. it's worth the paper it's written on yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So no, no, we, I, I get it. Yeah. So it just simplifies things so much and allows you to not spend cycles on things like that or on building the underlying dependencies for your plans to work, but yeah. actually working on the plan itself. And then the rest of the time that that simplification gives you is now yours to apply to business units and actual system improvements as opposed to just fighting the fires. No, that, that totally makes sense. And so my last question, here we go. Um, so 
if we're going to talk about unique capabilities that are, are, are available through Azure and Windows Server 2022, what are those what are those killer unique capabilities that weren't there before that you would, you know, in terms of that simplifying IT management, what would you what would you call out? Uh, I would start with uh, a new service that's well new, okay. relatively new. Um, auto manage Azure Auto Manage. Yeah, because we know, like we talked about this build sheet earlier, like this is yeah. as built document that everybody in everybody who's worked in IT in the past 10 years knows that you have that checklist of things that you need to do when you onboard a server. Auto manage is you set, it's basically a, a, everybody gets a backup, everybody gets a, a replication, everybody gets an antivirus, everybody gets, and those are all set into uh, auto manage and you say, when you uh, onboard, you say, I want auto manage to apply to this server, this server, this server, this server. It could be a Windows virtual machine running in Azure. It could be a Linux machine running in Azure, but it also could be an Arc enabled server in your data center running 2022 with the Arc agent, which means it has an identity in Azure. And you just say, I want auto manage deployed on that. And all of the policies that are built into auto, uh, auto manage will automatically go and apply to those servers. So basically you've automated that check mark, that checklist without actually having to build the script to automate that checklist. Brilliant. That's, that's the number one. Uh, number two is security center, especially with uh, Azure Defender and Azure Sentinel. Uh, so much power there in identifying your blind spots and then mm -hmm allowing you to be able to trace when something does happen where it started so you that you can plug that hole yeah uh, that's the number one uh, azure monitor i'm a huge huge fan of azure monitor uh, because it's a great way to apply they call them solutions or the uh, it changes the name every once every few couple of years i guess um, Every time there's a new product manager at Microsoft, something gets a new something gets a new name. <laughs> it's got a new name. Uh, I think they call them solutions now. Um, but it basically, you say, okay, I've got all the data because it collects all of your data, your your application log, your uh, system logs, your security logs, your audit logs, uh, your performance for. Uh, disk, uh, CPU, memory, like all of the logs that are basically lit up in. Um, in Windows, you select which one you want to replicate because, of course, the more data you uh, ingest, the more it'll cost you, but that's the nature of the beast. But then it applies those solution uh, to that data, and it basically, the way you can deal with those solutions is it applies patterns to data to actually highlight what you need to know. Mm which is so much different than what we used to do uh, back in the, even in the uh, system center days um, uh, uh, before those hybrid services were available. I remember like years ago, my job was on Monday morning to go through every server and go through the event log to see whether yeah. or not there was an error or a, a, a yellow triangle or a red, uh, a red stop sign. But when you've gone through I don't know, a couple hundred lines of the logs, your brain doesn't register patterns. Yeah. So you could have three informational uh, items that by themselves look, okay, we're good. But those three are a pattern that says that that disk is about to fail or that memory module is about to fail or something else is, is uh, a part of the pattern is going to is going to fail or is going to give, bring you uh, some some pain. The Azure Monitor and those solution, and it's all based on uh, machine learning uh, algorithms. It recognizes those patterns and highlights it for you and tells you the, what the, the real health of your system is. Yeah. And as part of Azure Monitor is also change and uh, a change tracking. So, because of course something happens, you say, what happened to that server? And everybody says, I didn't touch it. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. 
uh, <laughs> but now you can actually chain track the changes on those servers or kind of yeah. like a, a DSC, so a desired state configuration, which can be managed through uh, Azure Monitor. Um, it will put uh, VM extensions on your on-prem servers so that you can deploy easily more hybrid services to make your life easier on-prem. Uh, governance and policies are huge because especially if you're in an environment that has some compliance requirement where you set those compliance and you set what those oh, those requirements need to be through uh, your government your policy like azure policies and so on. and it'll go and tell you which are uh non-compliant and compliant and then there's a way to do it where it audits the info. So it'll audit yep. all your servers and tell you which ones are non-compliant, but it won't actually do the change. Or you could do it into a remediation model where it'll actually, like if, if one of your policies is that, I don't know, uh, IIS is installed on all your servers. Well, if it doesn't find it, it'll install it. Like there's, there's the, the audit part and there's a remediation part. And I know that was a bad analogy, uh, mm -hmm. but it will fix that issue, especially like what we talked about earlier about the um, uh, encryption. So if you're if part of your policy is everything encrypted, if it finds something that's unencrypted, it will turn it on. A bit locker or whatever other encryption uh, method you're, you're looking at. So, so those are the specific Azure offerings that I look at that makes your IT management simplified. Well, you know what? There's almost too much to talk about in one 30 minute session. Um, like it's, it, it's actually quite mind blowing that we've actually added so much. And I suppose it's kind of like, it's like 10 years worth of stuff all built up and then bundled together. So it's not, it's not like it's Windows Server 2022. It's like 10 years worth of Azure uh, has now come and now become compatible with Windows Server. And it's kind of like, it's now explaining that to everybody that you can use all of these things all at once. It's like, it's like you know, it's, it's, it's kind of mind blowing. Um, but we're, we're, we're going to move on to, uh, the, you know, the, the meme review. Yeah. This is oh, everybody's okay. favorite part. Okay. So like no more taking questions, just silly questions. So, okay. um, while, <laughs> while we do this, um, I click my fingers and the producers will show us the, uh, the meme, uh, the first meme of today, we've got two memes. Um, let's have a look. You ready? Don't, don't, don't die on me here. Now we're choking on the water when you see these funny memes, right? So let's do the meme one from the meme review today is going to be, there we go. Uh, the computer froze, press all the keys. <laughs> uh, well, that's the opposite of, uh, press any key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like we choked, uh, and there's not there's not a key that says any on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. That's um, that is uh, there's there's a there's a program in in the UK called the IT uh, the IT crowd, and uh, if you have, have you seen it? it, yep. Okay, but there, there's a bit in that where they have a, a pre recorded tape message when somebody rings the the IT help desk, it just plays the recording on the voicemail. It says right. Have you turned the computer on? Have you pressed all control delete? It just kind of runs through all of the standard things. And this is kind of. <laughs> the... Press all the keys. Yeah, press all the keys. But that's just what most people do, right? Most people are like. Arr! So, yeah, no, that's uh, that's fair. Right. Let's do meme number two. Let's do meme number two. This brings back memories. Oh, 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 my oh God. bad pun. That 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 is as bad as my dad joke from earlier. Um, that, bring back that's memories. That's a bad one. That's a bad one. I, like, <laughs> I don't think I don't think we can even. I don't even think anybody watches this on, in Australia, which I don't think anybody does watch this in Australia. But if they did watch this in Australia, they would be offended. They would uh, be offended. What's wrong with being offended? Well, I mean, like, you know, we're kind of like in, insulting, like all, all, all Australians there with that. That's that bad, that joke. Like, you know, we can't, we can't bring this joke back. It's, it's uh, cultural acquisition. <laughs> Fair enough. Look, um, every, every, everyone says though, that, um, the, the big thing now is, uh, like, um, uh, boomerang kids, do you know what I mean? Kids that come back after going to university. So, yep. um, I don't know. I so we, yeah, we got, 
you got one of those, have you? I, I have one of those. Uh, my 25 year old uh, moved back home during the pandemic. Um, Fair enough. Because she was at her, her last year of university. They went fully virtual. And she's like, okay, why am I paying rent away from home so I don't go to university where there's a perfectly good internet connection at my parents' house? Yeah. Yeah, of course. And also, you get uh, uh, dad's jokes and mum's cooking. So, you know, it's. Perfect. <laughs> I can't argue with that. Um, so look, I'm just going to summarize real quick. Um, like basically, um, simplified IT, IT um, with Azure and uh, Windows Server 2022 is kind of like, it, it's that collection of all those amazing things. So it's, you know, Azure Monitor, Azure Sentinel, Azure Arc, um, combined with WAC. Yeah, I remember that from last time. And also smart things like Auto Manage, which creates those um, workflows that simplify things for people in IT. All of that has come together in this beautiful knicker block of glory ice cream sundae um, with a cherry on top, which is Windows Server 2022. That's basically what we learned about today. Is there, is there anything in that description that I've missed off? Have I missed a flake or something? Have I, you know, what have I missed from my ice cream sundae? Is there anything that you would uh, add to that, Ryan? The, the the only thing I would add to this is that it's it's lit up in and people can associate that with server twenty twenty two, but a lot of that is also now that we've ported it to twenty twenty two or or integra integrated it in twenty twenty two, it also applies to your twenty nineteen and twenty sixteen. So you don't have you're you're looking at your environment, uh, upgrade where it makes sense, uh, upgrade where it's needed. But if you want to apply some of those technologies that makes your life easier and simplifies your IT management, you can still apply those to older versions. Okay, that is really good advice because that might save people even more money. Um, so, you know, good advice, good advice from Roman. So there we are. Look, everybody, thank you very much for joining us today. Roman, thank you very much for making the time. Um, there's always a time difference when we when we go across the Atlantic. So um, thank you very, very much for making the time. We always appreciate it. And it's always a pleasure having you. I always love, we, we got the last time we had Samba, this time we've got the, we've got the, uh, the hot tub time machine. Um, I, love, I, I love my calls with you, Roman. They're always very, very good. So look, everybody, thank you for chatting. Thank you for listening. Um, as with ever, if you've got any, um, you want to comment on the meme review, if you've got any questions that you want to ask or an expert that you want us to talk to, or in fact, something that, you know, I really would like Roman to answer this, let us know and we will get in touch with with, 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 with Roman and we'll ask him all your questions. Or, and if you've got silly questions like me, we'll ask, I'll, I, I, I'm, I'll ask you the silly, I'll ask the silly questions. I'm, a, I'm not There's afraid. No there's no such thing. No, well, yeah, the, uh, I'm, it's possible, Roman. It's possible. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm that guy. Um, you know, I was that kid at school that always asked stupid questions. So, uh, anyway, um, if anybody has or anybody wants to comment, please let us know. Thank you very much for joining us on the latest episode from Rock to Cloud. We'll see you all again soon. Thanks a lot. Bye. <laughs>